I still to this day uh, occasionally say, did, did we, you know, really uh, have a horse that won the Kentucky Derby? I could do it over and over again. <laughs> I loved it. It's just one of the most dominating and I think mesmerizing performances in, in the history of the Kentucky Derby. I mean, you just don't see them win with that much ease over that type of quality competition. Something special had just happened. He had just run the fastest last quarter mile since Secretariat, and Edgar Prado hadn't had to use his whip. He had just taken off. It's an amazing feeling. And proud, so proud of him, you know, what he did. It was amazing. It was amazing. I rode a lot of good courses, you know, and definitely he was one of the greatest. With the way that Barbaro, with the authority he won with, the whole nation was looking at him. How great is this horse? As a trainer, it's what we dream of. And to do it the way he did it, I mean, so easily, it, it just, you know, I, I felt for sure we had a, a triple crown winner. that this horse could win not just the Kentucky Derby, but the Preakness, the Triple Crown, and everything we always did with him was leading up to the next race. He looks pretty good today, Peter. He looks good, huh? Winning the Kentucky Derby for a trainer or a jockey is enjoyable for about two hours. First questions you get, what about the Preakness? What about the Belmont? I mean, they're even bypassing the Preakness when a horse wins like he did. And, uh, the pressure can be great. So you're not aware of the trip that Brother Gary had? I know he was wide. Hopefully it'll be a cleaner run race and made the best horse win. By this point, Barbaro is the story. Every newspaper columnist, every, every TV camera that's allowed access is following the Jacksons and Michael Matz. In any sport, you're looking for the superstar. And he was your typical superstar. He was doing what he was born to do, and what we taught him to do. He was born to run, and that's what he did, and I think he was the ultimate superstar. The Kentucky Derby winner is settled into stall number 40 just behind me here at Pimlico, and let me tell you, his arrival here, it was like watching a rock star. You may as well have been watching the red carpet on Oscar night, and he was just simply soaking it all up. It's cloudy and 55 degrees. Good morning on the Saturday when the world's racing spotlight is on Pimlico. It's Preakness Day, 2006. That morning, we got him out and gave him a little gallop around the track. And I mean, he galloped like he owned the track that morning. And Peter said to me, he said, they're going to have, have a horse with wings to beat him today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pimlico for the 131st running of the Preakness. It's the second jewel in the Triple Crown. One of our reporters calls it the Freakness. The infield is an absolutely crazy wild scene. There's not too much refined about Pimlico. Nobody tries to put on airs, but everybody there is having a good time. But as race time approached and the pressure built, the mood was serious for trainer and for jockey as their Colts' second test drew near. For two weeks, expectations had been building around the Derby champion. Now, eight other entrants were standing in the favorite's way, all looking to block Team Barbaro's path to the doorstep of the Triple Crown. There is a common thread with all the fans here today. They are hoping they will leave this afternoon saying they saw a part of history. They saw the next great horse of horse racing in Barbaro, the Kentucky Derby winner, trying to become the Preakness winner. The horse coming off the Derby winning that easily looked to be unstoppable because recent history suggests that the, the Preakness is the easiest of the three races. Were you prepared for all this hoopla that comes up with a Derby winner and the preparation for the Preakness? Well, Mike, I don't think I really was prepared for all this. It's been, it's been pretty exciting, but uh, it's, it's also, uh, I, I just wasn't prepared for this much attention. How's the horse handle? Michael Matz understood why it was such a difficult thing for, for the Triple Crown because of those two weeks 
beforehand. You have to have a very, very special horse to be able to win a derby, come back two weeks later and win again, and then three weeks later, win a mile and a half race. Number six, Barbaro, super horse or just very good? Can he come back in two weeks? So far, he's answered every question with a resoundingly positive performance. If he wins today, most horsemen feel the Belmont will be easier for him. We knew that the Preakness was going to be the hard one, but as he showed in the Kentucky Derby, he was a phenomenal horse, and, and, and that was just the beginning of it. He was absolutely an angel. Couldn't have been better. Edgar said when he warmed him up, he was feeling real good. He was looking back. He, he was kind of trying to buck on him. I didn't think there was any possible way, after what I'd seen in the Florida Derby and the Kentucky Derby, that Barbaro could get beat. Make no mistake. The bandwagon is rolling on Barbaro. I couldn't have felt more confident at the time. I never had any reservations that he wouldn't win again. Nine horses were entered in the 131st Preakness Stakes. One would emerge from Pimlico as the sport's biggest story. But not in the way anyone could have imagined. Preakness Day is a beautiful one in Baltimore in the mid-70s, and the track fast for today's race as they begin to load in. There's Barbaro, the favorite. One to two into the starting stall number six with Edgar Prado aboard, and Tom Durkin has the call of the 131st Preakness. All eyes on post position number six as Barbaro leaves from there. In the gate, ready for the start, and Barbaro broke through the barrier. Barbaro broke through the barrier, and that does not bode well. There was an instant letdown when people realized it was it was Barbaro that had come out of the gate. You must remember that he's a three-year-old colt that's just come off the biggest race in his life. He's as wound up as anybody else, so, uh, you know, he's probably anticipating the start. He heard a noise and he, he thought it was time to go. Uh, he was just um, reacting. Gary, this is not a plus. No, it's not a plus, Tom. And I'll tell you what, it's a bad feeling in just a normal race, let alone a classic. I took a deep breath, hoping he was all right. He looked good to me, uh, jogging back behind the starting gate. I've never seen a horse break through the starting gate in a big race like that. And if I've got a, you know, a ticket on a horse and he breaks through the starting gate, I run back to the window to try to cash my ticket in. Because, you know, probably 95 times out of 100, a horse does not win. Once again, ready for the start of the 131st Preakness Stakes. came away rather cleanly and like now like now and Garrett Gomez is intent on that lead he sends him right from the beginning and sweet northern saint is gonna run with him Bernardini is away third on the outside dive off goes fourth Barbaro Barbaro I believe he's being pulled up Barbaro's being pulled up an astonishing development here Barbaro's being pulled up by Edgar Prado he is out of the race and out of the triple crown he appears to have injured his right rear his right hind leg appears to have been substantially injured. I just tried to make my way down there as fast as possible, and uh, but when I got there, I, I, I mean, I'll, it was obviously broken. Just couldn't believe it. You know, I just couldn't believe it. Not Barbara. We go into shock mode, and just why? Why this horse? You know after what he's done for us and and why should it be so cruel it is going to be bernardini bernardini to win this preakness a better sweet preakness it was we thought this horse was probably going to get beat sometime in his life but we never thought it would be like this don't care about the triple crown, I don't care about anything else. You know, you only care about Barbara. Oh, oh, oh. He knew he was injured. He just stood like a statue. He probably saved his own life then. He could have, you know, in front of all those people, he, he could have sort of got nervous and run backwards and probably that would have killed him there and then. I think the horse was a very intelligent horse, and, and, you know, he was just looking for help. 
very, very sad. It's incredibly sad. The race, all that's out of the, not in the picture, not in focus at all. With a single misstep, Barbaro's right hind leg had been shattered in more than 20 places. For a thoroughbred racehorse, an injury this severe is life-threatening. The cheers for Barbaro had now been replaced by pleas to save the horse's life. And as far as his owners were concerned, deciding to do that was never a question.